Well, there is little relief in sight for first time home buyers, many of whom feel priced out after mortgage rates shot up this past year. Now some home builders are looking for affordable solutions and some likely changes to the typical starter home. Our real estate expert joins us live this morning with more details. Lane Lyon is a realtor and a managing broker at Caldwell Banker. Lane, good morning. Jordan, good morning. We all love that first home. It's, yes. it's just such a feeling of accomplishment. It's tough though. Yeah, I was going to say, right talk now. about some of the affordability issues we're seeing that's driving some of the changes. Well, these are conversations that are happening really among industry leaders in the new home community. And it's this idea of evolving kind of that quintessential starter home that we saw for so right. long. That post-World War II bungalow is now turning into something more of an attainable starter home of the future. So what do they look like? Well, according to Pro Builder Magazine, there are three styles that are on the horizon, and a few of them are popping up right here on the front range. The first one is gonna be called Build to Rent, Jordan. Okay. This is where you have a new home community, a major builder, building what looks like a new home community, but they're all for rent. Oh, okay. So we're seeing this in other parts of the country where then people can come in, they don't have that big down payment, but it doesn't feel like an apartment either, right. which is kind of nice. Next one, multi-generational living. This is something we've seen for a while, but they're getting really creative now. Uh, there's a study out there, Jordan, that uh, Americans, uh, one third of Americans, 18 to 25 are living at home. Oh, really? Mom and dad, that right? makes sense, given what you're seeing. It's affordability again, yeah. right? And there's this other term called grand mates, where grandparents have adult grandkids living with them as wow, well. Okay. So we're seeing some real creativity there. And then the third one is this density with dignity. The right. idea that we're having smaller spaces, uh, but we're very, very thoughtful in how we're doing it. A lot of first time home buyers say, I'm willing to sacrifice space okay. inside my house and even outside my house as long as I can afford it. That's a trend we're seeing here in the metro area in some of the new home communities, particularly in the eastern part of our metro area. And that's a trend that I think will stick around for for a while. Yeah, okay, so that's definitely something. It's interesting what you talk about with the grandmates because typically if you, it's your parents coming to live mm -hmm. with you because you want to take care of them for health care issues. Now it's the kids saying, hey, mom and dad. I, I still need a place to live. We're back. Let's figure this out. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what about in the meantime? How do first time home buyers navigate those current markets? Well, there are ways and there are opportunities and thinking outside the box is really what we're seeing now with the interest rates where they are. So we have situations where realtors are working with people who are buying with friends. Yeah. They're buying with family members. Family members are fronting the cash and then financing their own with their own family member. I never came from a family that that was kind of an option, sure. but that is happening out there. And also being creative, going a little bit outside the metro area, looking for homes that have been on the market a little bit longer, and also just those opportunities to maybe fix up a place. These are conversations that are happening. At least I can get in and start building that equity, even if it doesn't look quite the way I want it to right now. Yeah, okay, so you understand like the problems out there, but we often hear you say if you find the right house, don't wait. Why do yeah. you say that? If anybody tells me in this market, I'm waiting, I say, what are you waiting for? Right. Oftentimes it's, I'm waiting for the rates to come down. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, if you wait for the rates to come down, you're almost waiting for prices to go back up mm -hmm. in theory, because that's what we expect will happen. Affordability is a big thing. If you can afford the payment and get through to when those rates uh, start to ease up, which we thought was going to be this year, Jordan, a lot of the economists say we may be in this pattern for a little bit longer into yeah. next year but that doesn't mean there aren't opportunities. Yeah, a little bit of a scale shift right there when it comes to interest and home prices. Got it. The amount of times I hear my parents say to me, well, when we were in our 30s, this is what we could afford. And I was like, well, great. I would have loved to have all of that. Lane. They weren't spending a million dollars for a starter home. No, I don't exactly. Think. Yeah. They're going to have to wait for some grandchildren because we need a home first okay, and foremost. Okay, well, get on it. What are we waiting for? <laughs> all right, Lane, thank you. Let's